Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this video and I bet you guys are too. We're going to be talking about those tools that I brought up last week about social and emotional learning. So if you haven't watched last week's video about what is SEL, I urge you to watch that and check that out so that you understand and know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about social and emotional learning. Make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be giving away my free success path that I use with my clients and we are always talking about SEL. So there is tons of information in there and it walks you through the process. So if you want to stick around for that, make sure you use the link below, you can grab that. I also just wanted to announce that spots for my one-to-one -one are opening up. So if you'd like to schedule your free consult, make sure you use the link down below and you can get in on that. And if you feel like you're losing yourself, you're losing your time, you're losing your confidence and your relationships with your kids, this consult is for you. And so you're gonna make sure you wanna get in on that. But with that being said, let's go ahead and start the video because I'm sure you guys are at the edge of your seats right now. So I've categorized these different techniques into six different categories. So we're gonna be talking about each of them. So the first one is about listening. And I've talked about this in a couple of videos with how to get connected to ourselves and how to get connected to our kids. It's always about listening. Listening is actually a skill that we have to acquire. And I know even for adults, it's hard to listen and pay attention, but it's especially hard for kids to do that. So that's a skill that we have to cultivate and grow. And so that's really having an open ear and being responsive, saying things like, oh, I see, tell me more. You know, things that are just going to show them that you're listening. Being an active listener yourself is something, is probably the first thing that you can do to teach them to also listen. So the second one is about nurturing, and by that I mean nurturing self-esteem. So there are a lot of things that you can do to nurture self-esteem, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but I'm gonna bring it up again because it is part of SEL. And so things like positive affirmations, I've talked about this as well, but having you know little post-its around their room or even your room if you're trying to cultivate this in yourself but I, I have things you know all around my desk saying like you are awesome you are great you got this you're beautiful you're smart just things like that to constantly remind myself because sometimes it is overwhelming and sometimes you're always in that mindset of comparing yourselves and kids are no different they still compare themselves especially with social media now it's it's in their faces constantly and you know it's really a growing issue with you know, depression on the rise and anxiety and things like that. So having a strong self-esteem really makes all the difference. Another thing that I would recommend is having, you know, the make goals and being on track of their goals and having, you know, vision boards and goal setting cards or tracking themselves with journaling or, you know, just cultivating things that they really enjoy and love doing because that's what they're going to want to keep doing. It's going to be those things that they really like, not things that people are pushing them to do. But if they have the goals and the desire to keep moving with a certain thing and you appreciate that and you reinforce that with positive reinforcement, they're going to want to keep up that momentum and not just in that area, in other areas as well. Because again, that's kind of a skill that we need to have and it's easier to implement when they already enjoy doing whatever it is that they want to set a goal for. Uh, the third thing is modeling. And it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's really about what you do that you want to be a reflection in their own choices and their decisions and their emotional management and you know all the things that encompass social and emotional learning. So if you want them to have those skills, you should also make sure that you're doing the best you can to implement those skills in your own life. Because if you're teaching them or telling them to do something and you're not doing it, it's kind of just going to not end well because you're being a hypocrite and you're not following through on your word and you're going to teach them to do the same, unfortunately. And yeah, a lot of it is about changing yourself and it's really hard to do, especially if it's, it's just you. And so that's why with a lot of my clients, that's always like a number one thing that comes up. It's about changing themselves so that their own behavior reflects in the kid's behavior. And that really solves a lot of problems. But yeah, so modeling yourself and using yourself as an example, whether that's through having your own positive relationships in your life, having a good self-esteem yourself, setting your own goals and following through on your word. 
you know, being socially aware and, you know, talking about things that are happening in the world and acknowledging different cultures and people from different backgrounds, it's all going to play a role in how they see the world as well. They see it through your eyes sometimes. So you just have to always have that in the back of your mind. So the next thing is about respect and that's respecting their choices that they make. And again, that kind of goes along with having their own goals and wanting to do the things that they love to do. You kind of have to respect that even if it's things that you would never do or you think that your parents would never let you do when you were younger. It's like the generations are changing and we kind of have to keep up with it in hard ways because it's going back on a lot of the things we thought as kids and it's kind of hard to change that mindset and that thinking pattern, but that's really what is happening in society. It's like more people are starting to do the things that they love and kids want to do that and it's like kind of a huge shock to a lot of parents. But another part of that is comparing them to their friends or their siblings, you know. This kid in your class didn't do that or this kid in your class is learning at this pace and you're not. And I've seen a lot of that. So I think it's really hard to judge where your own child is at when you're constantly looking at the crazy growth of other students in his class or constantly comparing that. But every child learns at a different pace and they have their own unique abilities and strengths. So maybe academically, it's not their strength and that's totally okay. But acknowledging the strengths that they do have and the abilities that they do have, focusing on those positives rather than the negatives that are happening. Because if they, if you are, sorry, if you are focused on those positives, they will also be focused on the positives. And it's also going to get them into the mindset of, you know, looking at things that they can control and looking at things that they can improve on. So if they're really excited about something or, you know, a hobby um, and they're cultivating it and they're growing it, they're going to get into a mindset and it's going to reflect in other areas. And that, yeah, that might be academically and maybe not, but it's really just about not comparing to where they are right now and just helping them understand that they can continue to grow and they just need to focus on the positives and, you know, the really good things that are happening. So the next thing is about cultivate and I kind of just briefly talked about it, but I really want to talk about Angela Duckworth because if you've watched my previous videos, then you'll know who I'm talking about. She is a psychologist, she studies grit and she studies it in kids and how they cultivate that and how they become really successful in doing that. And she studies, you know, really famous athletes and entrepreneurs and even chefs and artists and all of these people she's interviewed in her life. And the one thing that they agree on that got them to this place was having grit. And she says that you can grow grit, so I believe her. <laughs> but I mean, it is, it is true. You can, you can grow into that mindset. I mean, I've taken her grit test last year and I just took it recently. And my, you know, the score that they calculate based on all the questions you answer is your grit score. And mine had gone up like 0.2 points. In the grand scheme of things, it didn't, you know, it wasn't really that big, but it's a score out of five. So I guess it was pretty big, but it goes to show that you can grow your grit. But I do want to read an excerpt from her grit book because she does talk about how she implements this with her kids. So I think you guys will probably get a lot of use out of this. But she says, I'd like to propose that parents who want to cultivate grit in their children abide by the hard thing rule and the fun thing rule. Ask your kids to do something that will teach them through experience, deliberate practice, and resilience. But also make sure they're doing things that they find interesting and enjoyable, even if it doesn't seem that they could ever lead to anything more serious. And so you're probably wondering what the hard thing rule is. And the way she describes the hard thing rule is that she has her kids, you know, go into some kind of extracurricular activity. So one of them was playing basketball, one of them was doing violin, and, you know, they got to pick that but they had to be in there for the duration of at least one year. They had to keep up with it even though they hated it because they made a commitment. And so she said that you can pick that hard thing, but you have to do it for a certain period of time. And that does really teach resilience and grit. So, you know, not giving up in those moments when you think you're just terrible at this and you hate this, but you're making a commitment to yourself to follow through on the plan that you set forth. And so that's one of the things she does with her kids. And the fun thing rule was that they're also allowed to pick something fun that they really love doing and try to practice it more. So one of her kids really liked baking and she, you know, the kid was like, well, how can I make baking my hard thing rule? How can you practice baking? And she said, well, sure you can. How do you think um, famous chefs get to where they are? They practice, right? So it's also about making the things that they find enjoyable 
an actual thing that they can learn from and they can, you know, adapt to more skills and cultivate that within themselves. Checking out her book on grit is definitely worth it and maybe implementing that hard thing, fun thing rule would be something new to try for you guys. But the last thing I want to talk about is foster and that's fostering gratitude because I think at the end of the day, if we're not thankful for what we have and we're not focusing on the good things that are happening and being thankful for those good moments, even if they're so small, it really makes all the difference and we can't find the joy as Brene Brown says. The only way to find those joyful moments is having and expressing gratitude. So there are a few things that you can do. So whether that's being thankful at dinner or during Thanksgiving or, you know, practicing gratitude in your community, giving back to your community, whatever it is that you do in your family. Another few things to try is having a gratitude journal. I have a gratitude journal and, you know, I just write down all the things that I'm thankful for and, you know, the things that I'm focusing on, the things that are going good in my life. So I can kind of use that as an inspiration. And when you're focusing more on those good things, you'll see more that those good things come into your life. You'll start to notice more things that are happening around you. And if you instill that kind of mindset in a child, they'll also focus on the good things that are happening as well, because they'll always see that from your perspective and focus on you know, the things that they can improve, the things that they can and control. And it really plays into all of these aspects in a way that they're focusing on the good, they're focusing on how good they are, they're focusing on their good interactions and their positive relationships. And it's really like, it's probably one of the most important things on the list. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you got some use out of it. And I really hope you try some of these tools, whether that's the hard thing and fun thing rule, or that's, you know, practicing the, that active listening that is a skill and modeling using your own best judgment, practicing these, these things yourself so that you can try to instill that kind of behavior in them. So I really hope you guys enjoy the video and stay tuned for next week's video and we'll be diving even deeper, going over more tools that you can use. So stay tuned for that. Bye.